Okay, my daughter Z46 has been having a problem um, when you drive it for a little while and uh, it's warmed up uh, sufficiently and then you try to turn it off and turn it back on, it'll, um, the engine will rev up and down continuously um, until you shut the car off. And uh, I do have a service engine light here, and I've checked the codes. Um, this will focus. And uh, the top one there is engine oil temperature sensor, then it's too lean on bank one and two, and then DMTL. And then there's one more down here, which is uh, control module self-test torque loss monitoring, which is a specific BMW uh, code. So I'm going to try to recreate the problem and show you guys uh, what's going on. And so the car's warmed up. I've taken it on a little drive and now I'm going to turn it off. And we will try to get this to work. Hopefully it will occur. Okay, here it is. I got it to happen. And what I did was I pretended that I was filling up the car with gas because that's when it usually happens when you go to the gas station. So I opened up the gas tank um, cover and put it back on and closed the door and now it's doing this. And so if I turn it off and try to start it again, it'll probably do the same exact thing. Oh, not this time. Sometimes it'll keep going and it'll keep doing that for a while. So, I did have on my codes, my code reader, I did have a DMTL code which is the um, diagnostic module that has to deal with the charcoal cancer which is part of the emission system so I'm leaning towards that as being the problem and um, I will probably buy that and replace it since it's uh, pretty cheap so. and so we uh, ran the codes on it with the scan tool figured out that it's throwing a, a P1447 which is Diagnostic Module Tank Leakage, or referred to as the DMTL pump. The current's too high during switching solenoid test. And so something wrong with the electric uh, solenoid that is underneath here. So I've got the car jacked up, wheels off, and it's uh, behind this panel right here. So we're gonna need to take that off. It's a couple 10 millimeter uh, nuts, one here and one up there and some eight millimeter screws one here one here and then there's some well another eight here and i think there's some uh pop rivets maybe so like i was saying there's uh three eight millimeter screws two 10 millimeter nuts and then this one uh plastic pop rivet which comes from right down here at the bottom Sorry about the light, right there. Then you can pull this panel off by prying it out from the groove behind um, the body panel here. And once you get it most of the way out, you can kind of pull it towards you. Like that. And here underneath, you'll see there is the uh, charcoal canister and the DMTL pump is attached to that. Next you have to remove these two plastic pieces, one at the front here and one on the bottom, and they come out with um, several, a uh, couple of these push pins. They're plastic, they'll probably br break, so uh, hopefully you have some extras on hand. 
And once you get those plastic pieces removed, you can now see the full canister, which is right here. At the back of it is the uh, DMTL pump. And then there's other uh, various hoses and lines that are connected to it. Uh, the DMTL itself is connected with an electrical connection at the back. And then this one uh, vacuum hose that's connected and removed with, uh, you just pinch the sides and then pull that out. And um, also there is uh, this part of it, the actual housing is stuck inside with a gasket to the um, can uh, canister. And there's also some screws over here on the side which you can't, access unless you take the whole canister down so I think these are 12 millimeter bolts here um, and here and so we'll remove those two and drop the canister down the two bolts for the canister are actually 10 millimeter and then it'll kind of drop down don't uh, take it down too far because the electrical connection is still on that you just push in here at the side and then pull that straight out and then there's these three, I think they're, they're Torx bits. I'll figure out what size they are and then I'll let you know. The three screws are uh, T20s, but be careful, mine were all rusted. So I had to actually drill out this uh, third one. Then you can pull the pump aft and separate it from the actual canister where it connects. And you'll have this one last connection like I said before, you, you pinch the sides and then pull it out from the uh, DMTL. Okay, here's the new one. Uh, it's a Bosch branded unit. Um, supposedly manufactured in uh, September of last year, so fairly new. And um, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description I bought off of Amazon. And uh, I just found some new screws that you're screwing directly into plastic here So as long as they're close and they're not too long and they can't be too long because um, this one particularly uh, Butts up right against the housing here. So make sure it's not too long so that it won't go into the actual um, unit and just bite into um, The part that's available for threads and so you also have to take off this little rubber grommet and transfer it to the new one. Just uh, pull it off of the old one and, and then push it onto the new one like that. Now I'll take the new pump and we'll press this uh, fitting into the housing of the uh, canister, charcoal canister, and um, you might need a little bit of lubricant to do that. And then we'll make sure that the uh, screw holes align uh, on the side here and then we'll take this last uh, vacuum connection right here and just press it into the side it should pop into place then we'll push the actual canister back up into place and reconnect the two bolts that are 10 millimeter don't forget to connect the electrical connection at the back then you put up this plastic piece at the back. Uh, there are two push pins, one there and one back in here. And uh, like I said, mine broke, but I was able to find uh, one that fits pretty well. And so I just used this. Then you gotta uh, push this front plastic piece up into place. You're gonna have to hold it with one hand as you push the, the push pin in. Uh, which is right up there and it holds both pieces it holds uh, this first piece of plastic that you put in and then this piece now you put the uh, fender liner back into place um, 8 millimeter 8 millimeter and there's another 8 millimeter hidden in the dark back up here and then 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and then don't forget the uh, plastic push pin that goes there. And then that's back together and we're all set. Now I'll go in and I'll clear the codes 
and we'll drive it for about a week and see if the code comes back.